Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? If the answer is yes, then you're ready. Uh, okay, we're just gonna get into it. We're just gonna dive in. But first, I have a question. When you're dating, do you have a genital preference? Before you answer that, let's just talk about what a preference is real quick. A preference is to prefer one thing over another. So if you're one of those people who's just like completely repulsed by vagines or completely repulsed by peepees, that's a requirement. Disclaimer, either one is fine. If you have a preference or a requirement, that doesn't involve me. Whenever we have this discussion of preference, there's always those people who are like, LGBTs are just forcing, forcing me to like everything that I don't like. It's just oppression. No one's forcing you to do anything. If you don't like a TikTok, you can scroll. Anyways, I'm asking because I just had a really amazing discussion with Isaiah, one of my mutuals. I will tag him below. And we were talking about genital preferences. And I was saying how I saw a few trans people make videos saying that having a genital preference is inherently transphobic. They explained how it shows a preference for cis bodies. And I was like, okay, makes sense. This is not the topic of the video. We're not going to debate that. I am not trans. Isaiah is not trans. That is not our space. Don't even try it in the comments. It did get me thinking though. Are genital preferences learned? Because I'm starting to think that they are. For example, I thought I was straight my whole life, right? And myself, along with my straight friends, we were like, ugh, we wish we were lesbian because men suck, blah, blah, blah. But then we'd always say, ugh, but vagina's like, ooh, I don't know if I could do it. Like, I don't know if I could actually be with a girl. Then I did a 180. When I realized that I liked women, I was like, all of a sudden, the thought of a vagine was just yes i thought to myself how did i go from not liking vagines to then loving them and i think it's because i thought i was straight and as a straight woman i am taught that i'm supposed to be attracted to men and i'm also taught that men have peepees obviously we know that not all men have peepees we know all of that shit is basically bs but that's the basic socialization that we receive right now we go on to gay men and we see a lot of gay men demonizing vagines saying that they're completely repulsed by them and we've heard the argument of misogyny etc but i also think it's because a lot of them associate vagines with women because that's what we're taught and this feeling of negativity toward vagines might be because they're not attracted to women and they don't want to be associated with anything that would be associated with women but then it's like what is a woman not all women have vagines not all vagines belong to women and the same goes to lesbian women who are completely repulsed by peepees. Just reflect on it on your own for a sec. Here's another question. If you are completely repulsed by vagines, why? If you're repulsed by peepees, why? What exactly about the genital is repulsive? I am not telling you what is right or wrong. This is just a reflection question for yourself. If you've had experiences with all the genitals and you just realize that you like one over the other or you just don't really like one, that's fine. I'm not telling you what to do. This is just a reflection question, so don't come at me in the comments. What do you think though? What are your thoughts? Comment below. Hi. I'm back again to keep discussing desirability politics because apparently I can't shut up about it. That's probably because in the positions of privilege that I hold as a white cis hetero small fat, um, it's the only way that my body type really affects my day-to-day -day life. So just acknowledging that up front. I saw some videos today from some of my mutuals um, that talked a little bit about dating preferences and uh, it, it inspired me. So one of them was from Plus Size Blanco, who's incredible. If you don't follow her, go follow her. And it was a response to a comment on a video that she had stitched that was like this person being like, stop acting like it's fat phobic to not want to date fat people, which it is. And before people come for me, that doesn't mean that people aren't allowed to have preferences. But a preference is based on what you do like, not on what you don't like, what you prefer. So if you meet a fat person and you're not attracted to them and you don't want to date them because you're not attracted to them, that's not fat phobic. If you meet a fat person and you are attracted to them but you don't want to date them because you know that your boys are going to be like, oh, moped, then that is fat phobic. But what really is like macro fat phobic is when you make a blanket statement, I don't date fat people. It's 2022, so I think most people know that you like you don't go around saying I don't date this type of person. You would never say like I don't date black people, I don't date etc. That's not the same as being confronted with attraction from a person of that group and feeling like you know what I'm not feeling it. Me you because attraction it is it's a person to person thing. You might think that something isn't what you're into, and then you meet someone and like all of a sudden that goes out the window. In that vein of race, another one of my mutuals, Brown Honey TV, had gotten a question like, do you have a racial, racial, pref racial preference? And she acknowledged a preference that she might have, but that she's open to any race. And that that is how a preference works. You can say, in general, I'm attracted to like fit athletic people. I'm a gym rat. I like to be up in the gym. So it's important to me that my partner is too. That, of course, is not actually automatically assign somebody a certain body type. But if in the same breath you say, so I would never date a fat person, 
person. That's no longer a preference. It's, for lack of a better term, discrimination. It's like, as Brown Honey TV was saying in her video, she's like, no, I can't go around being like, no, I would never date a white guy, even though reverse racism, not a real thing. It is still a generalization. You, you should never discount a romantic partner based on like a group that they belong to, unless it's like the KKK. You know what I mean? Demographic group. <laughs> So I think like th that's the difference that keeps getting missed in these conversations about like, it's not fat phobic to not date fat people. It is if it's based in a cultural understanding and belief about what it means to be a fat person. If you choose not to date fat people because you like fit people, then that's you stereotyping. There are a lot of fit, healthy people who live in larger bodies. If you're not attracted to a person that lives in that larger body, then that's okay. You can't just say like full stop, like, no, I would never date a fat person. It is dehumanizing fat people. And let's be honest, it's based in societal expectations. Women should get jail time for false accusations. I 100% agree, but you do know that less than 3% of allegations are false, right? Still, it's ruining somebody's life and they deserve to go to jail. That's true, but even now, only 3% of actual rapists get jail time, which is a much bigger issue than that tiny margin of rape allegations that are false. Yeah, but you have to think about the man and like his career, his reputation. You are more concerned with that than the fact that only 3% of real rapists get any jail time at all, over 90% of rapes go unreported, and 1 in 5 women you know have been sexually assaulted. Well, I've never been sexually assaulted, and men get assaulted too. And that's horrible regardless, and again, only 3% of rapists see any jail time at all. Not to mention, your false allegation statistic is based off a court ruling. It still could have happened. White without telling me you white. White privilege edition. <sighs> okay, here goes. Like many people, I've been pulled over by the police before. Remember one time as a teenager, I pulled my license and registration out. I dropped it and it fell between the seats. And the cop just chuckled as I rummaged around underneath my seat trying to find my stuff. Another time I was a cocky 20 something with a newborn daughter. Cop pulled me over for expired tags. I felt like he was taking way too long running the registration. The baby started screaming, so I got out, walked up to him, said, hey, can we speed this along please? He just shook his head and said, get in your car and sit down. A couple of years ago, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast on my phone. I was playing it on the YouTube app. The phone was clipped to my dashboard. I was listening, not watching, but California Highway Patrol pulled me over and let me off with a warning said, it doesn't matter, you could still get a ticket. Don't do that. If you want to date the same sex, fine. I literally do not care. Um, it seems like you do care though, because you're you're yelling, like you're actually screaming. If you want to be bi, be bi. That's your preference, I can respect it, okay? Let's get that straight. To segue in to the T part of the community, right? If you want to be trans, be trans, fine. That's your life, it ultimately does not affect my well-being. You see how I can respect your preferences? Being bi or being trans isn't a preference. I think we're using the wrong words here. I don't know how much understanding we have. But a majority of us straight people also have a preference, which is to date a person of the opposite, you know what? Well, just gonna stop you right there. Oh, I know I'm being nitpicky, but to say that you prefer the opposite gender infers that there's only two, and I think by now we know that that's not true. With one criteria that a majority of you guys deem as T-phobic, okay? That's our preference. Nobody's going to change that. Just like we aren't going to change your preferences. So I think here you're referring to genital preference. And I actually just posted a three minute video explaining how genital preference may actually be learned. If you want to break that down within yourself, unpack it, unravel it, just watch the video right before this one. Also, let's talk about what a preference is. A preference is to prefer one thing over another without excluding the other. So if you're saying you would never date someone who has a specific type of genital, that's not a preference, that's a requirement. And I'm not gonna argue with you. Do whatever you want. No one's forcing you to do anything, but like, just call it what it is. Don't call it a preference, call it what it is, a requirement. So here's the situation. We can respect your preferences. You cannot respect our preferences, but you also want our support. So it looks like you have a little case of what we call conditional allyship. Basically, you're saying, how can you not respect our preferences and expect us to support you? Like, you should be supporting human rights always. Also, the issue is that a lot of y'all's preferences are rooted in straight up bigotry. Like a lot of y'all will say, I would never date a trans woman. And then you ask why. And they're like, well, because they're not real women. And it's just like, that is just overt transphobia. Some of y'all love to hide behind the word preference when it's just 
bigotry and you don't like the word bigotry you don't like the word transphobic which is why you didn't even say it. you said tifo because you were just so scared so you hide behind the word preference at the end of the day do whatever you want this tiktok right here isn't gonna force you to do anything so for all y'all in the comments we're gonna be the gays are trying to force us to be gay relax no one's forcing you scroll if you don't like the tiktok but this little unhinged rant type deal that just happened like a lot of y'all say you don't care and then you make videos like this and like you're literally yelling at the camera like you are mad and it's like why are you mad we all have biases we're all socialized in a bss transphobic biphobic homophobic racist ableist society it's inevitable it's not your fault you can take the time to introspect and break down those things within you or not no one's forcing you okay <laughs> Yay! What do I win? A sad feeling. Oh. Name something you did online this year that people got unreasonably angry about. I used my white privilege to call out white privilege and trigger the white privileged who still claim that white privilege doesn't exist.